Hi, I'm Victor Margiotta, and this is the Community Show. My guest is Beth Ben. Uh, we are in Verplank, New York, with the uh, ensuing opening of an art gallery. It's called the Kino Seto Arts Center. And just like uh, the Renaissance swept through Europe through the 14th through 16th centuries, we have a Renaissance in Verplank with the opening of an art studio. Thank you so much for coming on, Beth. Thanks, Victor. This is great. Um, tell us a little bit about your association with the Art Center. Well, I have spent most of my career working in art museums. I was an art history major, and I worked at some museums in New York and Philadelphia and at the Newark Museum. And then I kind of turned my attention to smaller community art centers because I feel like they have a much more sort of direct effect on the people who live in communities, smaller communities outside of the urban centers. And I really, you know, I really like that. And I think what I appreciate about Kina Saito is that um, it's really the first time I've worked for a place where the mission of the institution is grounded in the work of an actual artist, but not only his work, like his paintings and his theater work, but it's also grounded in his kind of spirit. Like Kiko Seto was an artist who came to this country in 1966 from mm -hmm. Japan. Okay. And he started uh, working. He was a painter and also a theater designer in Japan. And he came here in 1966 and continued to do that kind of work. And he's, he was always an artist who worked among and between different types of media. Mm -hmm. So performance and painting and set design and props and all of that. And so that's kind of the spirit that we're continuing on here at Kino Saito. Awesome. Now he bought the place back in uh, 2016. It was Actually, more like around 2013. 2013 right? yeah. He had passed in 2016. Right. But his wife is going to uh, well, is growing ahead with the project. Exactly. So this was the idea. So they, um, Kiko Seto and his wife, Mikiko Ino, who is now the chairman of the board of this nonprofit, okay. uh, they bought the property in 2013. Right. And the idea was that they would get out of the, like a lot of artists, like yeah. they would get out of the city, they would spend, they would have more space mm. uh, to do his work. Like things were getting very crowded in his Soho studio yeah. after 50 years of painting, you know, <laughs> it, it works that way, you know. And so yeah. they wanted more space, but they also wanted a place where other artists from the city and other places could come and work and have space and time mm. and quiet and, so that was the whole plan, right? Mm -hmm. And it was always intended that they would renovate. We'll talk about this this place, the yeah. former St. Patrick's School. Right. Um, but it was always their plan to renovate this and make it a place for creative people. Creative people from the community, creative people from New York, other parts of Hudson Valley. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, unfortunately, then uh, Kiko died in 2016. Mm -hmm. And Mikiko, his widow... Um, decided at that time that she would form a nonprofit organization from the, you know, built out of the and founded by the estate um, to continue his wishes, Excellent. both of their wishes, really. Mm -hmm. You know, the building did sit for a while. And uh, actually, me and my family all attended school here, eight years at St. Patrick's School. And, uh, you know, it was a shame to watch it start to deteriorate. And, uh, you know, they talked about opening apartment building, like an apartment yes. building is one of the ideas. Right. But I'm so glad that, you know, and it will be at some point also an education center. Exactly. So, I mean, the great thing about it being a school is like it was this place is mm. grounded in education of yeah. all sorts. Right. But the interesting thing is Kiko Saito, the artist, also was a teacher. He taught for many years at a very well-known art school in New York City called the Art Students League. Wow. And so he was a teacher of other artists. Mm. And he also loved, loved working with children oh. and helping them with oh. art as well as, you know, grown adult artists. Yeah. But he's a person who had a lot of students uh, and he mentored a lot of people. 
um, in various, like he's really supported a lot of people in their creative efforts. We have a woman on our board, um, her name is Sarah Strauss, and she knew Kiko, like she started out with, like in one of his classes, and he eventually encouraged her based on her talent um, to become an architect. And she is an architect. Wow. And she was the architect who helped design this space and transform it from a school into the art center that we have today. Right. You know, I think it's definitely something you're born with and it's artistic ability. I mean, it's just like baseball players or football players. You know, I could practice baseball all day, every day, and I'm still not going to make the major leagues. But I think art is something that you're born with and then has to be nurtured. I mean, anybody, and I think it's therapeutic to sit and draw and paint and, you know, mm -hmm. definitely get involved with art. To be right. a real artistic artist, I think it's something you're born with. Well, I think there's so many different types of artists that mm -hmm. if you have an inclination toward creativity of any sort, I think you're going to find the right outlet for you. Yeah. I think it's true. Right. Not everyone has the visual ability to like see something and replicate it, but that's a very particular type of art. And there are other forms of artistic expression too. Yeah. I mean, I really think that anyone who really pursues art as an interest, as a hobby, mm. or as a career can find their own way, can sure. find their own place. And I think that's what Kiko did so well with his students, like someone like Sarah. Maybe she was never really meant to be a painter, but, but he encouraged her, right. and now she found her place, which yeah. is in architecture. Right. So what got you into art? Um, it was actually, uh, I really loved art. I mm -hmm. loved making art myself, yeah. even as like in high school. I had a fantastic, I just happened mm -hmm. to have a fantastic art teacher oh, nice. in high school who encouraged me to go on to college and study art. And that's what I did initially. Mm -hmm. And then um, because most art students in college have to study art history some, to some degree, right. once I went down that path, I sort of just put away being, I, I don't think I was one of those people with a natural talent. <laughs> I, I, I think it's better that I went into art history, and that's what I did. And so um, from there, from studying art history, I went on to work in museums, at, like, yeah. you know, which I love. Yeah, that's a great experience. Yeah. What are some of the greatest pieces of art that, that you've seen in your mind? Well, I, I mean, I see so much yeah. that it's almost... <clears throat> impossible yeah, it's, it's like it's trying like, to say what your favorite song is or your, right or what's your favorite who's your favorite child you, you know, know people <laughs> like you can't you can't just I, I i just can't i like a lot like i i really appreciate abstract art which mm. is what kiko's art is he was an abstract painter although you know i worked at the beginning of my career at the whitney museum and mm -hmm. they have the archives of edward hopper the best known american realist painter right. Yep. And I worked in that area as well. So I think when you're an art historian, you kind of, you can, you can sort of have interest in a lot of different types of art. And I yeah. guess that's what happened to me well, over my career. Well, that's what this place aims to do. It aims to, to touch on the theater also, besides right. the painting. Yeah. So yeah. talk about and that. And I think, yeah, I think that's very important because... Yeah. I think one of the important things about this place is we're trying to break down those barriers between like, oh, you're a painter mm -hmm. or you're a performer or you you do sculpture or you do, you know, so many artists today do cross over into different media. So mm -hmm. um, we have some, we have two artists in residence here right okay. now. They started on August 1st, wow. uh, Jane Dixon and Alexandra mm -hmm. Rojas. And they happen to be, they primarily do paintings. Mm. And then our next set of artists that's going to, they're going to start on October 1st, they're much more wide ranging. Um, one of the artists, his name is Clifford Owens. He does large scale paintings and drawings, but he also incorporates that work into performance pieces. That's so nice. these artists that we're having come up next are and another artist, Christine Rabat. She does drawings that she turns into animations that turn into videos oh, and God. become a part of a kind of environment that's all about sort of performance and space and like looking at visual things throughout space. Mm. So we're, we're, 
we're looking at artists who, and we want to have artists here creating in the space yeah. that, um, that really do kind of break down those boundaries and really do help other people to understand that there aren't always such clear delineations mm -hmm. between what a sculpture is and what a painting is yeah. or what performance is. Right. So we have a theater in the, in the school now, yeah. right, up right. on the second floor, a, a theater kind of multi-purpose performance space. And we will be showing theater pieces that were created by Kiko himself, mm -hmm. and we're kind of reworking them now for today. But also in time, we'll be showing other types of theater productions and dance productions and other kinds of performance and music. And um, so we're trying to be a very, it, you know, it's not, we're not a huge museum or anything. Mm -hmm. We're a, you know, modestly sized art center. Yes. And we're trying to, you know, make the most of the space that we have to really, to explore, you know, and to help everyone else understand like an exploration of a wider kind of art. Right. So your goal is uh, in the one space to show Kino's art, which is spans over 50 years. That's a lot of work. It's a lot. Where is all this stuff? <laughs> so it's, you know, it's interesting you ask. So in, in the space now, we basically converted spaces in the St. Patrick School, like the one we're sitting in mm -hmm. now, had been a classroom. Yes. So we were able to kind of convert it pretty easily into gallery space. Okay. And on the first, here on the first floor, we have two gallery spaces. The first one will always be dedicated to a rotating, changing exhibitions, changing displays of Kiko's work. Okay. So we'll be looking, he had a lot of, you know, different styles that he painted in. Mm -hmm. He did drawings and studies and um, we're going to be showing just a, a range of his work. Sometimes we'll show his work along with maybe some of his peers that were working at the same time oh, as him, nice. some of his colleagues at the right. time. There's so many ways yeah. to look at his work. And that's, there's always going to be a representation of his art within one of the galleries. Mm. And then the gallery we're sitting in right now, which we happen to call Gallery 2, <laughs> very unimaginative name. But um, right now, when we open, um, we made the decision to have both galleries have Kiko's work. Um, but going forward, this gallery, the second gallery, mm -hmm. will be a changing exhibitions of contemporary art. Nice. So sometimes it'll be the art of the artists who are in residence upstairs, yeah. whatever they create, we may show more publicly. Um, and sometimes it'll be works of other artists. We'll just continue to have changing exhibitions so that, you know, people can come by and see things hopefully, you know, different every time yeah. they come back. Right. Now, as far as education, what, what are your plans for that? So we, um, interestingly, we, we did retain one of the, cla the, real, the classrooms right. in the school as a classroom. Okay. In fact, we kept the blackboards. We kept <laughs> some of the old, original like desks, which are so awesome and yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, and so that classroom will serve as an arts classroom, a kind of arts workshop. We'll be bringing in teaching artists and holding classes both for young, at the beginning for young people, mm. but eventually I've heard from people in the community that mm. there's a real desire among adults to take some art classes. Yeah. And this was something that Kiko always wanted too. Like as soon as he came here, and especially when he went down to the river, like he always said that he could imagine himself. Yeah, bringing the kids bringing, down there. Bringing yeah. kids and adults and painting outside, yeah. you know, in the beautiful space. Oh, I know. Like he, he was very inspired by yeah. that. And so, so we will, yeah, we will be having art classes. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's so great that it didn't stop with him passing. You right. Know, that, that you guys were able to keep it going. Because yeah. he's got a lot of great ideas, you know. Yeah, he has a lot of great ideas. He has a lot of great works. And, you know, Mikiko told me once that, that Kiko said to her, an artist dies twice. Once when he actually dies, when mm -hmm. he passes away, and another time when people forget about his work. Wow. And so this is not intended to be a museum to Kiko Saito, right? Like, we'll, it's inspired by sure. him and we'll always have some of his work here. But I think the beauty of this place is that people can continue to be inspired by his work and do their own work. Whether that's, like, I, I really look forward to a time when we can have kids mm. sitting in this gallery yeah. 
and talking about yeah, what, what is, what is, what it is abstract work mm -hmm. and what is like what is it like to paint if you're not trying to represent a specific thing mm -hmm. like i think young people can be so inspired by this oh, work sure. and do probably some pretty interesting stuff themselves. yeah you know that i've always said that when i was eight years old i knew right from wrong you know what i mean i i wasn't a baby anymore you know and I think kids, you know, they, they don't get the recognition they deserve as far as what they're able to retain and what they're able to understand. So I, it's, it's never too early to start teaching no, them, especially you know, about art. My experience has been, um, you know, putting kids in front of abstract art in, in the museum settings that I've worked in, they gravitate to it oftentimes more than adults who sometimes feel intimidated by abstract mm. art or they don't, yeah. they, like, I don't... The kids have an, like, they just have an innate sense of, like, grasping it and, yeah, uh, a real connection there's oftentimes no doubt. to it. No. Yeah. Talk about the coffee bar. The coffee bar, yes. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad you brought it up. So, yeah, it's, it's very exciting for us that um, in addition to the galleries and the theater space and the education space, and we'll have other kinds of public programs and things, we have a coffee shop here um, at Kina Saito. It's called Banana Dang. Strange name, I yeah. know, right? But there's a story behind it, of course. Okay. So um, some time ago, quite some time ago, uh, Kiko, the artist, and Mikiko, they met a couple in Rincon, Puerto Rico. Oh, my God. Who had this little coffee shop called Banana Dang because one of the founders, the, the wife of the couple, her last name is Dang. And so they decided to create a coffee shop. They're very into coffee. They're very mm -hmm. into smoothies, bananas, like the growing production of both bananas and coffee in Puerto Rico. And so they named their coffee shop Banana Dang. And they became very close friends with Kiko and, nice. and with Kiko. They went on to leave Rincon, Puerto Rico, and open a Banana Dang in Oceanside, California. And that's where Banana Dang is now. So this is like an outpost of Banana oh. Dang. And they're here running it. Oh my God. They have a, a local person who they've hired as a manager, mm -hmm. but they, um, they're running it. And so these are, I mean, these are people who are really into good coffee and nice. know their coffee. Right. And we're very excited. So eventually right now, like banana Dag is kind of just, uh, you know, there's, there'll be when we open mm -hmm. serving coffee and then, uh, sort of light pastries like banana bread, of mm. course. And, some other things, and then on to, they'll be moving into like smoothies too, which they have at their California location, cool. and they'll have it here. So it's a great place. So, they'll, they'll, so it's a great place for people in the community. Anyone walking by can just come on wow, in, nice. get coffee, any, you know, get coffee, get snacks. Excellent. So, so when, you, um, when you open up, you know, the show is kind of time sensitive, so people might start seeing this after the fact yeah but talk about when it's going to open yeah 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 so um so we're opening this space mm -hmm. on september 9th of right. this year so this as you can imagine this has like been many years in the making yeah. right the reno renovating a building like this that had fallen into disrepair mm -hmm. took some time we were able to do things with the building like put on a new roof put yeah. in solar panels like do a lot of upgrading of things. We put in an elevator because it's required by the American Disabilities Act. Um, so we did wow. a lot of renovating, but we will be opening on September 9th of this year. Okay. And the beauty of that is that uh, September 9th is Kiko's birthday. Oh my gosh. And so we were kind of focused on that date for a long time. Oh. Um, it's something that's very important to Mikiko that like we that the space symbolically opens on his birthday. Mm -hmm. And so that's happening. And on September 9th, beginning at four o'clock, we're gonna be open for the first time to the public. We want anyone and everyone from the neighborhood, from the awesome. community, we have flyers to put out and um, we want everyone to come by and see the space because everyone who's come to see it so far has just really loved it. Mm. So we'll have an opening on the 9th and then we'll continue with opening events on the 10th and the 11th. So, so for those three days, for that kind of, as we call it, kind of an extended weekend. Okay, good. Um, so that anyone and everyone can come and see it. A lot yeah. of Kiko's friends from New York and other people who knew him will be coming probably more or less over, you know, on the weekend, not the 9th so much. Um, but on the 9th, 
there will be uh, the town supervisor, Linda Puglisi, oh. is coming to do a ribbon cutting at 4.30. There's a ribbon cutting, there's a town proclamation, and some of the elected officials will be speaking, and then there'll be food and drink and oh, good. people being able to see the galleries and performances and that kind of thing. All three days, but mm -hmm. just the ribbon cutting will be happening on the 9th. Good. So you actually went to go see Mary Jane? Up at the church I tonight? Did. Mm -hmm. I did. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, like um, we have been in touch with the church okay. because, for a number of different things. But mm -hmm. most recently, because, because we have been very interested in the history of the church. Like, I think it's fascinating mm. that that parish, right, St. Patrick's, bought this property on 7th Street. In 1891, okay, like that's a long time ago, and and it, and they and this building functioned not this building when they first came here. Apparently, when they mm -hmm. bought the property, there was a, there was a wooden building on the property, and that was the school, and then they outgrew that wooden building, and in 1921, this building, this brick building, was built. Was built, and so we've been very interested talking back and forth with people at the church mm -hmm. about the history and trying to get that history straight right. so that we understand it. And she told us that she has a lot of historic materials over at the church. Wow. Like <clears throat> historic photos, of course, right? Mm. Of, of both the building and also classrooms. Um, because it's amazing. Anyone, so many people from the neighborhood who come here yeah. to just walk by and stop in, tell us like, oh my God, this was my classroom. <laughs> or like this, you know, like I went to CCD here yeah. or I spent time in the multi-purpose room like in classes and so she was so she's just been really helpful to us in terms of, of providing us with a lot oh, of the historic yeah. background which like we I think you can tell by looking at the building is like history is is the history of this place is really important to us and mm -hmm. like we've kept the original wood floors this bench that we're sitting on is actually one of the beams that had to be removed from upstairs when they had to replace some of the beams, but mm -hmm. we saved this. We saved, you know, we saved some of the tin ceilings, the original tin ceilings in the rooms. We saved some of the old desks from the school. Yeah. And so like keeping that history while also repurposing this place so that it can function and serve the community today and have the proper upgrading yeah. that is necessary to have well that happen. i went to school for eight years here and my whole family went to school here and uh, you know and then we went to uh, st patrick's uh went to uh, henry cutson high school okay but um yeah i can't tell you how many memories i have of eight years and it's funny it was pretty much the same 12 to 15 kids is that right yeah that went every through, year through, that went through together yeah and uh you know, when you bump into these people, they're still the same people they were when, you know, when they were little kids. I don't think your personality really changes from from when you were young until now. Yeah, but. I think you're right about that. I think there's a lot that sticks with people. Oh, yeah. You know. So you still live in the city? I do live in the city, but I spend a lot of time up here. I, uh -huh. I have... I have a little space over there in the okay. house here on the property right. that I can stay over. Because I think once we open, I'll be spending a lot more time up here. Yeah. You know, just and it's managing convenient. the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very... Now, yeah, the convent, I could remember going over there and uh, helping out the nuns. We used to have a, um, a nun who's a psychologist. Is that right? Yeah. And we used I to have to go this. over there. And talk to her, and she would kind of wow. make sure that you were okay, you know. That's so interesting. Yeah. And that was almost like an interview, you know, and I always kind of thought, well, I, was that's... it like a therapy session? I think it was, yeah. So <laughs> right. just to make sure therapy you were... Therapy with the nuns. Yeah. But... So, but she was very nice. Wow. And, uh, you know, I always thought that's kind of a neat thing to do, you know, to be like a therapist or... You know, it ties right in with doing interviews and mm -hmm. just asking simple questions and keeping conversations right. going. You know. Right. Well, that's so nice that they were concerned about yeah. everyone's sort of oh, mental health yeah, and, right? in addition to everything else. So, You know, and I was reading up on the Renaissance and uh, how important it is. You know, during that period, not only were they interested in art, but science mm -hmm. and mathematics. And they were more of a realist painters, you know, and then That's they were, true. they were doing, you know, they were 
dissecting bodies and they were drawing pictures of the insides and the outsides. And they were, you know, expanding on not only art, but philosophy and uh, religion mm -hmm. and, you know, your place in the world. I mean, they were looking at astronomy and, and you know, what is our purpose on Earth and stuff right. like that. During your time in school, in art school, what, what are some of the things that, that really sparked your interest? I, I was very much a person who enjoyed, and, and, I, and to this day, I think I really appreciate artists who don't just let's say paint for painting's sake, although there's, there's room for that too. I really like artists who incorporate things like, um, you know, issues about the environment mm. and science and, and music, like artists, like there's such a connection between music and the visual arts and artists who can capture those things, who can move beyond strictly, like you said, like realist painting. Mm. Um, I've, I've always been interested in people who use art to explore some of those other things, to explore science particularly mm, and right. the environment and sound yeah. and music. And we do have to take care of the planet. It's so important. I mean, we're passing it on to our kids and, right. uh, you know, the environmental things. I know for me, I'll just save in a cup and using it three or four times before mm -hmm. I throw it away. Yeah. You know, if everybody did that, no, we'd have a little less uh, garbage. Yeah, you know? and I, I think we, you know, we think about that too here because mm. you know we did um, make the decision to put solar panels on the yeah, roof, for instance, great, yeah. and we have a composting place here, so nice. we can be composting both what we use, what's used by the cafe. They're mm -hmm. very, they, the owners of the cafe of Banana Dang Cafe, are very interested in that mm -hmm. too. So we want to be, yeah, good stewards yeah. of the environment as well. Okay, so moving ahead. You know, they have those uh, art where people all come together and they, you know, they sip wine and they all, I'm not even sure. Like, uh, like an art opening, like a, yeah. a gallery opening with people. But uh, my sister-in-law had a place, she called it um, Van Gogh. Uh, I'm not sure, but where people would come and they would... Uh, you know, sit around and everybody would paint. Okay. Oh, yeah, they have these things called, like, paint and sip. Paint and sip. There you go. Right, right, right. You guys aren't going to do that. Well, we, um, we will we'll Eventually. Be, we'll probably be very creative. Mm -hmm. We would like to do programs for adults similar to that. Like, yeah. a, a former place where I worked, um, a very popular thing was candle making and drinking wine. Wow. Yeah, we had, like, and so I, I love those kinds of things. I think yeah. they're great. They are. I think like people coming together to be to express themselves and have a creative outlet, mm -hmm. you know, is terrific. And we will be doing we'll be doing those kinds of programs for adults, different like interesting kinds of crafts. Maybe like right. the the art of Japanese flower arranging, mm -hmm. for instance, is another one that we've thought about. Things like that. We will definitely do that. Excellent. Do you have a uh, website we can go yes, on? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, it's, so. the, it's the name. It's, it's www.kinosaito.org. Okay. And people will start being able to come in? Yep. Is it by appointment? Starting, or just... um, no, actually, so I'm glad you mentioned this because it's important to talk about the hours. So for now, at least for this fall, like we're starting in September, of course, and going on. For the rest of this year, we've decided we're just going to be open Friday through Sunday. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on those mm -hmm. days, okay. and Thursday by appointment. Okay. So we're just going to see like how people use the space, what people want. If they want us to be open more times than that, then we will. Excellent. But for us, for getting started, that's what we're going to begin with. Perfect. And so and it's that, going to be more or less a week, a, you know, an extended weekend thing. Okay. And that's a great way to end the show. Thank you, okay. Beth, for coming on. Thank you, Victor. This All is right. so nice. Awesome. Really nice talking with you. Okay. I'm Victor Kamarjiada, this is the Community Show, thank you for watching.